Hi, this is Megan Jacks, and I am here with sketch number two from the Creative Memories September 2022 Worldwide Virtual Crop. So we have a two page layout here. And one of the striking features that you'll see here is this kind of bold banding that is um, across the page. It works out really well. You can see with the measurements, they took um, these bold strips of paper and they cut them at two and a quarter inch from the right hand side and created the two and a quarter by two and a quarter squares that they put on the opposite side of the page um, or the opposite side of the layout, excuse me. And then they have the border detail here. They have some circles and some photos. So I love this, um, the background to this. I love the, um, the bands here, the, the strips of paper. I think there's lots of ways that you could accomplish that, mix and match your papers to go with your theme. I really thought it was a nice detail to carry those extra pieces over to the opposite side. The one area that I struggled a little bit with this layout, and you're going to see that I struggled with, was the size of the images. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, just totally ignore the images if you need to. Create your background and then let your photos go on the page as they need to. There are um, the circle details. I am keeping those circle details. Um, I give you the measurements here. It's a five inch circle, which you would use circle number two, which is the medium size circle. The red blade on that outside track is going to give you the five inch circle. And then for this three and a half inch circle over here, you're going to need circle number three, which is the largest circle. You would use the red blade on the inside track. So that's going to give you those circles. So for this layout, I had some photos of my son, my oldest, playing in the swimming pool in my parents' backyard. This is from a visit to my parents in something like 2008, I believe. So these are quite old. This guy is now a freshman in college. So definitely some old photos. And you can see here, one of the things I want to point out, there's a lot of horizontal images in the sketch itself. So I had a lot of vertical images. So that worked out okay. You can see here I've got some matted already. I'll talk about that, but I've got vertical images. And I had some horizontal images that I ended up cutting down to be more square-like. And I'll explain why I did that in a few minutes as we get to putting the layout together. So those are the photos. Um, the size of the photos doesn't matter as much as, um, you know, just work with what you have for your photos. So we're going to put the background together. That's going to be the key feature that we're going to put together here. So what I'm working with, I hemmed and hawed on this. This took me actually a little bit longer than I anticipated. I actually put the, the layout together last night. I'm filming this on, uh, in the morning, um, after I had a chance to think about it and the light is better in my studio, um, I put together, um, I was going to use a serene waters collection with the, the wonderful, you know, water things in it. However, the colors weren't quite working with my photos. So let me grab one of the photos here to show you better. What was really inspiring me for the colors were the photos themselves, right? So my son is wearing swim trunks. He's got they're gray with black and red and blue in the, in the trunks themselves. So what I ended up doing is going and getting strips of paper that go with those colors. So I pulled some of the, um, the barn texture out of the, um, summer tonals pack. This is a white and black uh, design, uh, pattern paper from an old black and white, um, paper pack. Out of the Feeling Bright pack, I picked the uh, tonal kind of green matches the grass color. And then I did use this more of a blue tone out of the Serene Waters. And then lastly, out of one of the black and white tonal packs, um, I have this gray paper. So I've got all the colors that are in my photos as my stripes. And I kept them as very, um, they're kind of pattern neutral. I mean, this word, the barn it works out. My parents live out in the country. Um, so it, to me lends itself, everything else is fairly neutral. So I felt it worked out okay. And I really just wanted the colors. So those are the, the colors, the papers. So sometimes you don't have to get too caught up in the theme. If you have just neutral patterns, these don't really have an overall too specific of a theme with them that they just kind of work together. If you just go with colors, 
I am using the Serene Waters um, a piece for some of my background. Um, I'm gonna show you guys as we start to put this together. So I've got my strips picked out. I've got some additional details here. I did punch some borders with the uh, bubbles punch. Really helps with that water feel. Punch that in some um, blue cardstock. I've got my circle elements. I'll talk about those in a few minutes. And here are the squares. I already cut everything to two and a quarter um, wide. My strips were two and a quarter by 12. And then I cut off those two and a quarter inch squares. So those are all set to go on my left page, or excuse me, my right page. These go on my left. We're gonna put the left page together first. I'm gonna be using a white background. And I've got some pieces here that I will be working in and I'll talk about those as I add them. So to do this with these two and a quarter inch strips, I'm gonna use repositionable adhesive to get this going because in case I need to move my strips around. I'm gonna just lay them out here to make sure I like my order of things. I'm gonna line up my white card stock on my cutting mat and just lay these out. There, there is about, I can't remember how much of a gap there is, but there is definitely a gap between each, a little bit of almost like you say a grout line. And there you can see how it's gonna look. Now to put these on here to make this even, what I found is I'll put the top, the bottom, and the middle strips in first. So I'm putting the bottom strip on and I'll put the top strip on. Once I put the top, the middle, and the bottom on, putting in those in-between pieces is really easy. It's all about just positioning. So now I'm going to use the middle piece. And the reason I'm going to put the middle piece in is I can center that around that six inch mark. So these are two and a quarter inches tall the pieces are. So I'm coming down here. Here's my six inch. So I'm going to go an inch and one eighth above and an inch and one eighth below. And that should center it for me. And now you can see here, all I have to do is just center between the two pieces. If my edges don't line up perfectly over here, I thought I did a pretty good job cutting everything to be equal. Um, I It's gonna be okay. I'm gonna end up putting a border here. And I, I know the sketch doesn't call for it, but I did it to balance things out. Sometimes um, when, I, when I started putting things together, it just felt a little off kilter without that second border on the left hand page. And I wanted to bring in more of that bubble water element to the layout since I wasn't using specifically water themed paper. So once again, just lining this up to make sure it's reasonably even. Nobody's gonna get a ruler out when they're looking at it. So you just want it to visually look the same. And it does, looks pretty good there. So now one thing I decided to do when I was putting this all together is I'm gonna bring this paper over and kind of give you guys, well, I'll go ahead. I'm gonna put these pieces on next because once I have both sides done, then we'll talk about how I'm handling the middle. This part to me was kind of a no brainer. This was pretty easy. I stayed very true to the sketch. There's lots of ways you could do this. You could use a border, you could use a paper that has the stripes already built in and just cut yourself the long. So you'd start off with a 12 by, um, or you'd cut your paper. You know, if you had, if you had horizontal stripes already in your paper, you could just cut it off at nine and three quarters, put one strip on one side of the paper, um, the layout, put the larger strip on the other and you're good to go. I'm sure we will see people doing that. Lots of options there. Let me just, that's going to go there. I tried to ignore my own rules of doing top, bottom, middle first. Get 
get these put in there. Remember, I'm going about an inch and a quarter or inch and one eighth above. So up here, two was technically four and seven eighths, and then coming down to seven and one eighth. And now I can put these pieces, center those in between. All right, so there's everything ready to go. Now let's take a look at this as the two page layout. So we'll go ahead and put these pieces next to each other and you can start to see the background take shape. So there's my background. All right, so right there, that's so fun. Lots of ways you could do with this. So what the, the sketch called for was having a border on one side. To me, it started to feel a little unbalanced, especially when I started putting some of my photos and everything on. So what I decided to do is go ahead and punch a second border and just give it a little bit more balance between the two. So that's an option. I'll overlap this a little bit to cover up. My ends are not quite even. If I wasn't using a border here, I probably would try to, I would have cut um, I think this green piece is a little bit long. That piece of paper, designer paper, may have been a little bit longer to begin with. And so you can start to see how that looks. Now, when I started putting my photos on here, the white was a little too stark. I wanted a little bit of, um, I liked it between my bands of paper, but I thought it was a little too bright here. So what I've got is I cut a 12 by 12 piece of paper, I cut one side at that nine and three quarters, and that's gonna go over here. And I'll put my border on as such. And then I have the two and a quarter inch is gonna come over here and I'll actually lay this on. It'll cover up any little discrepancies here. We'll put that in place. And this is Serene Waters paper. The blue uh, matches kind of that does give a little bit of that water feeling for the pool photos. And then I'll layer my bubble border on there. So there's my bubbles. We'll do the same thing on this side. Adhere the photo, uh, the background. And then I will put on that bubble border. Oops, I grabbed the wrong, I grabbed the wrong um, adhesive. So I don't know if you guys have ever done that, probably. Um, <laughs> so thankfully the multi-purpose tool is real easy, just goes in there and pushes that adhesive out of the way. So I pause the video quickly while I clean that up. We're getting repositionable adhesive placed on the border now. That will be a lot better than regular adhesive. And just putting those, the borders in place. Okay, so there is the background to the layout. So there you can see, looks fantastic. I'm really happy with it. Next up is photo placement and kind of those additional details. So like I said, my photos are definitely not the same ratio, um, the same orientation as the sketch photos. And this is where I talk about your photos may take you on a different journey. So if you love the background, create it. And now you can see I've got lots of places that I can put photos. I can put photos over my um, 
my uh, stripes here, which is what I'm going to do. And on this side here, what I actually ended up doing, well, let me just show you first. So I have photos that are going to go over here. I have these four photos and I've matted them in the same background, another sheet of that paper. So here are these four photos and they're just going to go on as such. You can still see those, um, the background colors. And on this side, when I was trying to get my photos on here, I had a mixture of uh, horizontal and vertical. What I was found I was able to do is I was actually able to um, get my photos all to kind of go in a grid pattern. Some of the um, horizontal photos I could actually trim to squares. Um, so I did that or smaller rectangles. So what, that's what I've done. I've got, I'm building just a kind of the grid pattern in here on this side. So you can see what I did is I've got this paper is matting over here and I went with a little bit of a thicker mat around the photo. So you could definitely see that color, you know, gives yourself that same, um, you know, uh, matting effect that's over here is kind of mimicked over here. I didn't want to use a thin mat. I used a fairly bold mat so you can see that matte color. Now, um, I have to make some adjustments based on the layout you can see here. So I've obviously mixed things up. They had small photos. I used some larger photos. I've taken up a lot more real estate in here. Uh, but I did like these circle details. I think it's a nice contrast to the squares, the lines, and that we were in a round pool. I know you really can't see the round pool too much here, but I did want to mimic that. So I thought it would be fun to kind of go with a, you know, kind of like a pool. So this took me way more than I thought it would to come up with this, but I trimmed the uh, five inch circle with the, um, the cutting system. And then I used the vellum from the Serene Meta or Serene Waters and cut out the vellum. And then I punched the um, friendly fish border and that will go in here. It will tuck under these photos. As such, I'll get that all put into place. So kind of, um, you know, this would have been a spot I could put a title on here if I wanted to, since I kind of took over the title spot, there was supposed to be a, like a title on one of the bars here. And I took, you know, I put a photo there. I could use this to put a title. I have a second friendly fish spot that I'm doing over here with the circle, Came that, kept that same circle detail with more fish, just really emphasizing that the water and the, um, that aspect of it. So now I needed a spot to put the title and, um, to give a little context for the photos. And so what I did is I'm actually going to put my title right along this edge here and I punched out, I'm just keeping it simple. It's going to say backyard pool. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll do a little bit of journaling. I haven't quite spaced the photos out or the, excuse me, the letters. And I'll do just a little bit of journaling, get these photos or these um, letters on here. These are die cut letters. Um, I really love my die cut letters. I think I have about um, 10, I have 10, well, I'm probably closer to 15, maybe even 20 different fonts. But honestly, I probably use. I use probably about, I use under 10 of them on a regular basis. In fact, you probably really only have seen me use uh, probably like five or six of them. Backyard pool. So what I'll be able to do here is I'll do that with a little title here. And then what I can do is, um, if I need to, I will come in, um, and with the letter, with the number for the year, put 2008, um, might even squeeze in, you know, um, June, I think this was June. I can't remember now. I'll have to go back and look at my photos. Um, it was either June or July of 2002 or excuse me, 2008. So right there is the layout. You can see, you know, you start off on a journey with those sketches. I really liked this, um, horizontal stripe pattern, but, um, the photos, 
just weren't in my cards. I looked through photos trying to find a bunch of horizontals that I could crop down. This is your little bit small, the four and a half by three is um, quite a bit of cropping. Um, but you can see here, you've got a lot of real estate to play with and great ways to make some adjustments. So do what works for your photos. I definitely will be using this um, background again. I really like these stripes. I love mixing and matching the paper. Um, I think that's a great way uh, to use up scraps. So there you go. That is sketch number two from the September 2022 Creative Memories Virtual Crop. Thanks for watching.